most of us probably have an interest about what's happening either locally, in the country, or even the whole world. And for that, the news fulfills our needs, doesn't it? And the way that we receive that news is changing, isn't it? From traditional newspapers to the radio, television broadcasts, to perhaps now more internet uh, as a source of news and social media. In fact, uh, many newspapers now uh, are struggling to survive. Uh, the local one uh, near to where uh, we live, uh, the Oldham Chronicle, recently stopped print after many years. It was actually founded in, in 1854. And it thought that the way people now obtain news was the reason for their demise. So there are many different ways now that we can get uh, news, isn't there? In fact, we like our news to be very much up to date, don't we? And immediate, breaking news. And we have 24 hour news, don't we now? We can often see events as they actually happen before our eyes. So what sort of things do we see that headline our news? Well, sadly, most of it tends to be bad news, doesn't it? And this probably highlights the state that the world is in. So we have headlines such as food shortages, famines, but not just perhaps these restricted to countries, third world countries we might uh, uh, turn them as, but also this country as well, there is food shortages. We have food banks uh, set up, don't we, to try and help that particular need. Also headline in the news, we have financial crisis. We have pollution. We have crime. Drugs. And war. And disasters as well. And of course things like war aren't just things now that happen in, in, in other countries. We have... Uh, locally terrorism as well don't we and uh, recently near to where we live uh, near, near Manchester there was the um, the bomb at, at the arena there which was uh, something which happened uh, in, in, in Manchester so these are the sorts of things that sadly headline our news aren't they and many perhaps see the Bible as being something which is out of date when actually as we shall see this afternoon it is more up to date than tomorrow's newspapers because the Bible speaks of these particular times and in uh, Luke chapter 21 We just read there in verse 25 that there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So the Bible is actually telling us that these times would come and we're going to come back uh, to this passage uh, a little later on. So, first of all, then we ask ourselves can this world's rulers solve? all these problems so when we think of the these key rulers today um, we have of course Theresa May and we have Donald Trump and then we have Putin are these really able to solve all these problems that we've highlighted uh, that are in the news well we know that the answer to that is no they just can't come up with any solution can they to these problems But there is a plan with God for the future. There is good news, which is termed the gospel. Uh, the gospel message is in the Bible. 
And we have the gospel referred to in these passages here in Matthew, uh, which we won't turn to, but they all speak of, of the gospel and the gospel message. And this good news is, first of all, that there's going to be one king. Um, you don't need to turn to this, but I'll just uh, read to you from that passage there in, uh, in Zechariah. And it says there in chapter 14 and verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. There's going to be a new administration. One religion. And also in Zechariah chapter 14 in verse 16 we read that it shall come to pass... That everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. We're also told that there's actually going to be a united world. Psalms tells us there, Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him. There will also be total disarmament. If, um, if we look at uh, Isaiah, there's um, a few passages that we're just going to turn to in Isaiah. Firstly, Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. So there'll be no more fighting and no more war. We're also told that there'll be a new economic system. And this is also in Isaiah's prophecy, a little further on into chapter 23 and verse 18. And her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up. For her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord. To eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. So this is addressing all these problems that we see uh, in the world, isn't it? Today. More good news. International peace. And this is back into chapter 9 of Isaiah. And verse 7. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. There will be domestic security. In Micah we read, But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts hath spoken it. There will be uh, an, an equal distribution of wealth and resources. And again this is in Isaiah, it's just further on into chapter 65. Verse 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, a man elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. We're told that there will be firm government control to the benefit of all. In the Psalms it says, He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. The good news goes on. There will be a vast increase of earth's productivity, we are told. In Amos 
chapter 9, it says, Behold, the day shall come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine and all the hills shall melt. There'll be no unemployment. Um, chapter 61 of Isaiah and verse 4. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. There'll be a sound educational system. Um, Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. And verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then chapter 33 of Isaiah. And verse 6, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And there will be new social standards enforced. Chapter 11 of Isaiah. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And then chapter 32 of Isaiah and verse 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. And then finally... God's will established on earth. Matthew chapter 6 says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So there's quite a few passages there, but I think it's important just to have a look at what the Bible says about what's going to happen in the future and this good news that's in store for the world. So despite all this bad news that we see currently, there is some good news in store. So we have with the Bible prophecy which is fulfilled. Because where the news actually reports on what has happened, the Bible is actually able to tell us what's going to happen. Now the news might attempt to make some predictions. But it can't really say with any certainty, can it, what's going to happen. An example of this is the weather forecast. Even with the most clever computers, how often does it get this wrong? We make our plans, but we can't be certain that they will be fulfilled. But the Bible is unique in being able to tell us what the future holds. Because the Bible says that God does know the future. He knows what will happen. And more than this, God can make things happen. He's in control of our world. And also again in Isaiah chapter 46, we read from verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. So God knows everything right from the beginning to the end. He can predict with certainty because he already knows what will happen in the future. And so although we humans are unable to predict the future events, God can. 
So are there prophecies then which we can read and trust? Well, most capital cities of the world have diplomats. Those who have been formally appointed to represent their native country. The embassy in which they work is even regarded as being a small part of their native country. When they speak, they do so with the authority of the government whom they represent. In a similar way, God has chosen ambassadors to give his message to the people. In the Bible, they are called prophets. These men were chosen to speak God's words to God's people. One prophet wrote, writes Amos, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. Now there are 66 books in the Bible, written over many centuries, both before and after the birth of Jesus. Many of these books record God's revelation to the prophets. What God wants to tell us about himself, about ourselves, about Jesus and his purpose with the world. Many of these prophets have a book in the Bible which carries their name. And we've mentioned some of these already. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Daniel. And then at the end of the Old Testament, there are a collection of 12 books. Each has the name of the prophet as its title. We have Jonah, Micah, Joel, Zechariah and Malachi. And then we have other prophets such as Moses and Elijah. But how do we know who is a true prophet? How can we be sure that the prophet was really sent and appointed by God? Because one of the main problems that we find today is that of fake news. So how do we know that these prophets are not fake? Because the Bible warns us about false prophets. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if that thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. So this is why Bible prophecy and the predicting of the future is so important. It proves the Bible is God's word. And if it really is God's word, we can trust it. So although there might be many good things about today's world, these are pretty much insignificant when compared with so much that is wrong as we've already highlighted. The Bible describes what the world would be like before Jesus returns to be king. And it's what we read there in Luke chapter 21 by way of introduction. Because it says there that there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So when Jesus spoke of the sun, the moon and the stars, he was using Bible language to describe the ruling powers in the earth. And the sea and the waves, he meant the nations of the world. Jesus prophesied then that a time would come when there would be great distress in the world, a time of fear, when it would seem like there's no way out of the world's problems. So these words fit, don't they? The times that we live in. Also, if we look at what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Second 
Timothy chapter 3. It says from verse 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. This verse describes perfectly, doesn't it, the attitudes and the problems that face today's society. And also earlier on in that uh, chapter 21 of Luke, it says from verse 10, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. So when we combine these prophecies in the Bible together, what do we get? We get turmoil in the countries of the world. We get world problems without any solution. We get fear and dread of what might happen. We have moral standards disappearing with everyone doing what they think is right and no regard of the consequence. We have God and the Bible increasingly ignored with society living for pleasure. Countries at war with each other. An increasing number of earthquakes. Widespread famine with much of the world population missing the basic needs of life. My dear friends, the Bible's describing, isn't it, our world. Bible prophecy is being fulfilled in the news that we see. But you might say, well, these are just general things. So let's just look at something a little more specific. Let's just look at the example of the land of Israel. At present, there are over 170 nations which are recognised by the United Nations. Over the past 70 years, this number has increased because many nations have obtained their independence. Some of these nations have not only become independent, but they've also changed their name. In the course of history, countries' names and territories have changed. And this is true of world empires as well. World empires that no longer exist, such as the Assyrians, the Medes, the Persians, the Babylonians, and many others. If you look at the example of Israel, they are a nation who existed over 3,000 years ago and still exists today. It's a nation about which God has made promises and prophecies in the Bible. And we can find these prophecies have come true. 2000 BC marks the beginning of the Jewish nation. In the book of Genesis, we read that God chose a man called Abraham to be the father of this new nation. And when God called him, he made him many promises. Such as that what we find in, in Genesis 15. Um, if we just, uh, I'll just read what it says uh, there to you in Genesis 15. From verse 13 it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace thou shalt be buried in a good old age but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full in this prophecy God outlines what would happen to the descendants of Abraham over the next 400 years and there are four points firstly during this period, the nation would live in a foreign country. They would suffer affliction for 400 years. They would eventually come back to the land that Abram lived in. 
and they would then leave the foreign country with great possessions. And so the nation of Israel settled in the land promised to them. They had a succession of kings. Moses had given them God's laws to follow, but we see that they turned their back on God and they worshipped the gods of surrounding nations. So God decided to punish the people. He told them how Babylon, the superpower of that time, would conquer the nation and take them. And it's in Jeremiah's prophecy in chapter 25, where we read that this would happen. Uh, Jeremiah 25 and verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words, behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. And it shall come to pass, when seventy years are accomplished, that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. So once again, the nation of Israel would move to another land, but he said after 70 years, they would return. So history shows these prophecies have come true. However, again, the nation turned their back on God and his son Jesus and so we see the Romans drove the Jews out again from their homeland. And Jesus had made a prophecy about the temple. And this again is in Luke chapter 21. And just earlier on in the, in the chapter, at verse 6. It says, As for those things which ye behold... The days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that sh shall not be thrown down. Jesus made it clear that God would punish the people because they had forsaken his ways. So this exciting chapter full of prophecy showed how the nation would temporarily come to an end but be restored. Um, verse 24 and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled so Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70 by AD 135 all Jews were banished from the land of Israel But even though they were scattered through many countries and they were forced to endure persecution and shame, the Jewish race survived. And at the beginning of the 20th century, there were very few Jews in the land of Israel. There was no state of Israel. They were scattered around the world. God's people had been homeless for centuries. And Ezekiel 37 tells us about what would happen. In 1948, the state of Israel was created despite all the odds. And there we see the headline in the news there at that time. In 1967, as a result of the Six Day War, Jerusalem then returned to the control of the Jews. So the very fact that Israel exists today as a nation and Jerusalem is in the hands of the Israelis 
is a direct fulfilment of these prophecies. So these news events then were spoken of in the Bible. We need to see the importance of the nation of Israel continue to look out for things which are happening concerning them and the Middle East. And we'll see that these are in the news, aren't they? Constantly. Almost daily we can see something in the news concerning Israel and Jerusalem. And recently we saw how President Trump recognised Jerusalem as, as capital. So Jerusalem is important. It is going to be the centre for God's coming kingdom. And we are told in the Bible that the nations will gather together to a battle called Armageddon. And we have these prophecies. We have Ezekiel. And we have prophecies of Daniel and Joel, Revelation and Zechariah. Which helps us to understand what to expect from the nations before the Lord Jesus returns to set up his kingdom. So it's important then that we watch the news with our Bible in hand. And in, in Ezekiel 38, it refers to a land of Magog. And this can be identified with Russia and Eastern Europe who will form an alliance with other countries which will come up against Jesus when he returns to restore the kingdom of Israel. And this prophecy in Ezekiel 38 speaks of the, the nations which will stand aside from this northern alliance which will come up against Jesus. And within these we have referred to Tarshish, and we can identify this with Britain, who fits the description, a maritime colonial power, fits all the clues that we are given. And it refers to the young lions. And we can think of the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth with over 50 member states that were territories of the former British Empire. So in this respect then, it's significant when recently in the news we have seen Britain taking the decision to come out of Europe. Because in the prophecies, this Tarshish power is not politically, economically or militarily aligned with its European neighbours. Plans are afoot in Europe to head towards a United States of Europe with the unification of European countries into a, a single sovereign federation of states. In 2009, a president of the European Council was elected. The Union has its own flag, anthem, and there are even calls also to form a European army. Now Britain, as the Tarshish power referred to in these prophecies, cannot be part of this. So as Christadelphians, we expected at some point there to be a separation from Europe. So when in 2016, the world was shocked by the Brexit vote, we actually saw it as an important fulfilment of prophecy, an exciting event. So this really does bring us bang up to date with things that we're seeing in the news, don't we? We see how it's important. It's important that we watch these events, to see what's happening in the news, to see what's happening in the Middle East, to see what's happening with Russia. And whilst looking at the news, to have with, with us that our Bible's in hand, because it tells us about what's going to happen. And it tells us what we need to do to be a part of that coming kingdom which will be established at Christ's return. Thank you.